win that turn sort against Buzz Carey. You know, um, obviously Buzz Carey's not really a big name, but I built the fight up to, to, to have some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of interest in it. You know, people think I'm saying. What's Buzz Carey done to you? Well, you know, obviously, you know, as you can see, he opened the box of news this week on the front page. He's got in the blue Ryan, He's got Michael Gomez. He's got a rematch with Buzz Carey. Buzz Carey's for everybody. But he's never got that kind of publicity. And the reason why he's got the publicity is because he's, he's fighting Michael Gomez. You know, hey. he's fighting Michael hey. Gomez. And the reason why, you know, the reason why he done was, I, I was being a friendly to him, being a nice and wrong. I'm just snarling at everybody. Being friendly to him, being nice to him. Then he slagged me in the box of news after I beat him. What did he say, Mike? Again, he said uh, if he'd have had six weeks' notice, he would have beat me. So I'll give him six weeks' notice. I've let him have six weeks' notice, saying, you know. So you come back after uh, after a meal. You got, got a win last weekend. Um... Where do you go from here? What, what do you fancy? Well, I fancy, I fancy, I fancy, I fancy Alex Arthur. But that's the fight I'm looking for. You know, I've been looking for that fight since I beat him. You know, Alex Arthur's a nice person. So, you know, obviously I'm going back down to Super Flyweight. Did you see Arthur and Cook then? What do you make of it? Yeah, I seen Arthur and Cook, and uh, you know, to be fair, you know, uh, Frank Warren, you know, Cook sort of don't look like a very world, strong world champion. You know, uh, Arthur's. Dead weight train, dead of the weight, and he gave uh, Cook a good fight. You know, I think uh, I think Frank once Alex Apple was on here to the Tanta Sports saying that um, the fight was like they could do it again. It was like Ben and Eubank. It was nothing like Ben and Eubank. It was a very good, but it was a great boxing match. You know, but it wasn't one fun. You know, it's also the sort of fight that uh, Sky TV screamed out for. Now Michael Gomez, Nicky Cook, sounds yeah, it sounds good. Michael Gomez v. Amir Khan again, sounds good. Michael Gomez, Alex Arthur, sounds good again. Because people know, they don't know what's going to happen, but whatever does happen, it's going to be exciting. And that's why I'm the big name in the, in, in the boxing game. Uh, of late, then, you've been, you've been matched pretty hard. You've had Khan above your natural weight, and you've had Johansson. How, how do you feel about those fights now? You know, uh, the Johansson fight just come a fight to you too early. You know, the Johansson yeah. fight just come a fight too early. The Johansson fight is a fight I've been screaming out for since he beat me. You know, I remember I was retired for 18 months. I was, I was, I was, I was retired for 18 months. I went to 30 stone 8, just flat. You know, I made a comeback. <laughs> I made a, I made a comeback. And, um, you know, as I made a comeback, I had two wins, two easy wins. Then I fought Kyle Johnson, who was busy, who was kept busy. You know, the fight come with a fight too early for me. Kyle Johnson's a fight I could beat easily. So Kyle Johnson's a fight, you know, I could have, I could have a tomorrow and beat him easily. And, uh, Mike, you, you do know how to cause a fuss. Uh, you, you've gone on the record saying that, that Ricky Burns is, is the weakest Commonwealth champion. Is that right? Yeah, but, you know, that one, you know, Ricky Burns, you know, he, you know, he's just good management. But Frank Warren's one of the best promoters and managers in the world. Let's be, be honest. Let's be good. Look what he's done for Nassim Hamlin. Look what he's done for Harry Ken. Look what he's done for Michael Gomez early on in his career. And that's what he's done for Ricky Burns. He's, you know, he's, 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 he is the man at his job. To be fair, people saying Sports Network is going through bad times or this is Frank Warren's had bad times and he's bounced back every time. I really really Frank Warren, I really like working with Frank Warren. But look what he's done with Ricky Burns. Ricky Burns could have and he struggled to win the British title twice, but Frank started and then he got him to come up. Got got Kevin Mitchell to vacate it, vacate it and sort of Ricky Burns in. That's good management. That's how, how that makes that's what makes Frank Warren the man he is. It's true. Did you see Ricky Burns against the Ghanaian Osamanu Akaba? Yeah, of course. I did. Yeah, of course I watched the follow obviously I watched the fight been in my way. I think you know Ricky Burns is the man I want. You know, I'd love to fight Ricky Burns. I'll fight Ricky Burns tomorrow, you know, I'm 10th on. I could make, I could make 9 4 within 2, 3, 4 weeks, always. So I'd like to fight that fight, but someone tells me that he's fighting Nicky Cook. He's fighting Nicky Cook? Wow. So, 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 so I've, been, I've been told, I don't know how true it is, someone's mentioned that to me. Hey, I've got one for you. He might be a mate of yours, but he's, he's a Manchester lad and it would be a great local derby. How do you feel about fighting uh, Steve Foster Jr.? Yeah, of course, you know, Steve Foster's a very strong, he's been working on the way to the great fight, you know, and uh, Steve Foster Jr. is a great fight, you know, he's got a massive fight on the line, and it's a fight I'm looking forward to, you know, if it comes off, you know, I'm coming to the end of my career, you know, I'm in this career, you know, I want to try and get to 50 fights unbeaten, you know, I'll have another five fights, you know, without losing, so we have had 50 fights, and, you know, Steve Foster's fitting nicely, you know, it'll be a good money fight. Can we chat about Kevin, Kevin Murray, for those who don't know him, how long has he been training you? Yeah, he, well, he's been training me since. He, I mean, he's been helping to train me since the camp fight. But he took over, you know, obviously with his input. Uh, I was with Bobby Rimmer. You know, Bobby Rimmer's a very inexperienced trainer. He, uh, I come back after the Kyle Johansson fight, and all he said to me, all he kept saying to me was, keep doing what you're doing. You know, when he should have been telling me, you know, move your head, keep your hands up. He didn't tell me nothing. Early on, I was moving my head, and I stopped moving my head. Bobby Rimmer should have told me, which he didn't do. 
And ever since then, uh, Dunham went against a cow fight. He believes me, she said it was a mistake. And he, she said it was a mistake. I went against a can. I come back to the corner in between rounds. He wasn't telling me what to do. You know, fights are won by the corner. The corner man sees things that the fighter doesn't see. And obviously, it didn't help me. Yeah, body shot I haven't thrown for a long time. And Kevin's getting me back. He looked at me earlier fighting, trying to get me back to my best, trying to get me back to my boxing ability. You mentioned um, about moving your head and, and keeping your hands up. Uh, earlier on in your career, you were a bit sharper defensively. Is that something you and Kevin are going to work on? Well, uh, we're trying to get me back. So, you know, there's not you can teach Michael Gomez. All he's trying to do with me now, Kevin, is trying to get me back to my best. And I, and, you know, I do believe I will, I, will be, I will finish up champion again. You know, as soon as that belief's gone, I'll be, I'll be out of this game. How do you feel about the film made about you? Yeah, they're making film. They're making film of my life story. I'm, I'm in the middle of doing the book. I'm trying to finish the book before the film comes out. You know, it's, it's, it's an absolute, uh, it's an honour. Everybody would love to have a film made about him. I'm having a film made about me. It's, it's outstanding. You know, I've seen the trailer of it. It's all going well. I'm doing the middle of doing my book and that's so hopefully I should get some, a few quid off that and I'm able to look after my family. Uh, as all, that's why I've always been in this boxing game, to make sure my family and my kids don't have the, the childhood I had. You know, and it's, it's a real honour that's been done and I uh, can't wait till it's been released. And, uh, OK, let's plug the book, Mike. When, when's it going to be out? Well, the, the, the book should be out uh, maybe March, in the middle of maybe March next year. You know, I'm just in the middle of doing it right with a person called McGregor. He's um, the right for Celtic View uh, for Celtic football team. Uh, he, he's done it right here. Got a publisher's on standby ready to do it. So we're nearly finished it, so it should be out well March. So there you have it. That was Michael Gomez. Big thank you to everybody who appeared in the uh, podcast tonight. Namely, uh, JJ Odegiri, Johnny Eames, Tony Oki, and Michael Gomez. Not forgetting our very own Kevin Taylor. I've been Will Hale, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>